Hi everyone, it's Jeff here from discoverablebase.com. Uh, if you haven't been to see the website, make sure you do go and check that out as soon as possible. Uh, you'll find the first part of my lesson on thumb position, which is talking about transitioning into thumb position. And right now I'm gonna give you the second part, which is giving you the foundations and uh, explaining the technique about how we play in thumb position. So let's get stuck into the detail. Well, thumb position is one of the most common things that I'm asked about uh, as, as a teacher. And it's something that I've really, I really enjoy using. I use thumb position all the time, not just for solos, but also for walking bass lines, you know, playing melodies, anything that I, I can really. I like to use as much of the fingerboard as possible. Now, to get there into thumb position, um, we talked about the transitional stance, and I'm just gonna very quickly recap about what we talked about in the previous lesson. But if you haven't seen that lesson, please go and check that out after this one. Okay, so we talked about bringing the bass towards you, and as you move into thumb position, the bass has to be secure against your shoulder, and as usual, against your hip, and that stops the bass from rotating. You've got to have your arm and your elbow up so you can apply arm weight to keep uh, the string down. And we also, as we move from a normal playing position, we uh, have to uh, move slightly further back, either just if we're transitioning in and out, or maybe like a step back just to allow the bass to come towards us. Um, and it's secure against your, your hip as usual, but this time, it's actually resting against your shoulder. And one of the most common things that I see are people standing with the base, uh, essentially too vertically trying to use play in thumb position, but that means that they're often not able to use their arm weight. Now, of course, there's a lot of different ways to play the double base, and there are some great players who do play with the base more vertically, but my recommendation is to allow the base to come towards you to make the base a bit more horizontal effectively and allow you to bring your uh, arm weight into play, and that will really help you. So on that subject, let's make sure that our elbows are raised up and we're not resting them against the side of the base like this. You'll find it very hard to play, but it's quite tempting to allow the arms to fall down. So keep the arms raised up and you'll be nice and comfortable. Okay, now, the main thing about thumb position that you have to realize is this tuning anchor, this G harmonic here, is absolutely crucial. And we've spoken already about moving into thumb position and uh, the trap playing in the transitional area. And we play with our third finger lower than thumb position. But as you may well have guessed, when we move into thumb position, the thumb takes over and rests against the G harmonic. So you need to get comfortable at finding that note. And I don't have a problem if you use a little bit of pencil to mark on the bass this tuning anchor. Now I'm, I'm not a big exponent of looking all the time at where you're playing, but I often mark the G, the D and the following G harmonic. Uh, with a little line of pencil just on the uh, uh, on the fingerboard. And I know a lot of other um, bass players and teachers who also do this as well. I certainly wouldn't mark every note, but I think those harmonics are the tuning anchors that you're going to be uh, using to help you reference your tuning. So if you were playing um, C sharp, perhaps, that you would think, okay, I've got the harmonic here, the D here. So that means that the C sharp's there. And it can just help you if you're having these big shifts, you know. Okay, so we've got the G here, and if it helps you, you're okay to mark this. Tiny little thing, don't mark the uh, fingerboard in the lower positions because you'll have to turn your head to view them. The reason that it works in thumb position is it's already within our line of vision. Okay, now this is the real meat and potatoes of what, what happens. The first bit is, that I'd like to discuss, part of the technique, is what part of the thumb touches the string. And essentially, it's somewhere between the knuckle and the inner part of the uh, thumb there. So I, I'm often just around the knuckle towards the edge of the nail, but it's not anywhere in line with the nail and it's not behind the knuckle. So you can rule out behind this, this knuckle here and you can rule out the nail. It's somewhere in between. 
just sort of marking my finger if I can. It's about there for me. But everybody's uh, thumb is different, you know, has, it have a different shape. And you might find it uh, uncomfortable to be near the, um, the, the, the knuckle, and you may find it more comfortable, you know, to be slightly off to one side. But I would recommend not going further back against the knuckle, and I'd recommend not being too near the end. The other thing that I do often is that I will, I will use the thumb to go across and play other ones of the other strings. And I won't always just be using the same part of the thumb. So I may well like it that. May well move the thumb across. And that can also help mute the string that is adjacent. And you'll notice that the D string isn't ringing and part of the reason is it's being gently muted. Uh, with the end of the thumb. That and the right hand. Okay, so how do we know what fingering to use? Well, there's a great system, um, which is there's three different possibilities. Now, the main one that I use is called chromatic. Just going up in semitones. So you've got G, G sharp, A, and then let's use the tuning anchor of the open A string, and B flat, or it could be A sharp if you like. G, G sharp, A, A sharp, or B flat. I'm just getting carried away there thinking about that melody, Blue Monk. That's a great one to practice if you're starting out, practicing this chromatic position. So this is a very popular position and one that I use a lot. Now, there are three positions. The second one is called semi-chromatic. And this one is the same, but there's the distance of a tone between the thumb and the first finger. Again, the danger spot that you should be looking for is between the thumb and the first finger. Because for most people in chromatic hand shape, um, they extend this distance too much. And you'll often find that in semi-chromatic hand shape, that this is too flat, like actually it was slightly flat there. So make sure that this is equally divided and have a look at the way the fingers are. The fingertips aren't completely in line that way, and neither are they completely that way. There's a slight angle going on. And always try and keep the fingers arched and the weight going into the fingertips, whether you're in chromatic or semi-chromatic. Remembering that the problem area is almost always for students that I see between the first, uh, the thumb and the first finger. And just keep coming back, referencing the harmonic, then playing the stopped note it should sound the same because it's possible to play it out of tune like this for instance you can just about hear the harmonic and then now we're sharp it's not exactly the same pitch so you find the harmonic now if let's just well i'll tell you what i'll do is i'll explain the last one and then we'll go back and we'll have a look in detail at how to use the first one which is the most common now the final one is called diatonic and you can think of this as either the top of a C scale, C major, or the start of a G major scale. So it fits within the scale and the notes are G, A, B, C. So it's a two tones and then a semitone at the top. So to recap, chromatic, semi-chromatic, and diatonic. All the while we're letting the weight go into our thumb via the arm in through the hand and the fingers are resting down you don't see my fingers flying up like this away from the uh, fingerboard it's really important to let them come to rest keep a really relaxed loose hand shape um, and let the uh, the thumb and the spare fingers keep the string down keep the weight into the fingertips
So for the rest of the lesson, we're going to look at this chromatic handshape. And this is the one that I think is most important that you should learn first. In future lessons, we're going to be looking at the semi-chromatic and diatonic, and we'll talk about moving up uh, the fingerboard. But for now, I'd like you not to go any further than this first position of thumb position with the thumb on the G harmonic. And check that these notes are correct using tuning anchors such as the G or the A, open A string, and play them this pattern on each one of the four strings. And as you move around, like a normal playing position, you have to move your arm uh, round to allow you to get the purchase on the string. If you're kind of like this, you'll, you'll find that you get a bit tight, so you need to like to do is to try different finger combinations so not just one sorry thumb one two three try going thumb two thumb two but when the second finger go, sorry when the second finger goes down all the first finger comes down behind it and then reference the, the uh, third finger one two one two and then now try one three Sorry, I keep saying one, I mean thumb three, thumb three, thumb three, thumb three, thumb three, thumb two, thumb one. Different patterns that you can think of. Um, it really is important to make sure that this hand shape is established much in the same way that when you're playing in half position, you have to have this really nice hand shape to be able uh, to help you to play in tune consistently. So one way that you can practice this is to practice moving into thumb position, bringing the bass towards you, try the harmonic, play the stop note, and then play the uh, pitch that you're working on or the pattern that you're working on. You could even do this with the bow. In fact, I'd recommend using the bow to get a really focused sound. So then move the hand away and try it again. I'll try it in the lower area of the bass in half position and back on a different string. You could even practice a pattern, for instance, say um, arpeggio. So Maybe just the first two notes of the arpeggio so we can stay in this chromatic hand shape and it should be really smooth in and out of the different positions. Um, have a go at playing that. So G, B flat with the second finger, D with the first finger, G harmonic and then the B flat at the top and then back down. It's just a G minor arpeggio but going up to the third. There's the arpeggio and then the third. And I keep referencing my tuning using the D as a tuning anchor. So you can practice playing something in the lower position and then moving up into this higher position. Okay, now for the more advanced players, I'd start looking at playing something that you can play quite comfortably in a lower position, in a higher position in terms of melodies and what have you. So you could do something like uh, Summertime. All of this fits within this chromatic hand shape. Be, uh, it could be absolutely anything. You could practice your walking bass lines. And then making sure that you're practicing moving in and out of these different positions. So 
one of the problems that I see is that people, when they start to get comfortable with this uh, chromatic hand shape and thumb position, is that they'll start to play. And then they'll move straight back down into half position. But they won't actually explore the area of the bass full range of um, the fingerboard, so they won't be playing. They won't be playing in between. So try to make sure that you can join it up. What you don't want to do is to be lifting the, remember with your shifting, when you're moving from one position to another, the fingers should remain with the string down on the fingerboard. So if you're playing, Try to keep, as much as you can, the string down. Try not to do this. Now I'm obviously making it really dramatic here. But try to keep it, everything down. So it's all about moving fluidly across the fingerboard. So thumb position doesn't feel like this separate entity. It's joined up with your normal playing in a really comfortable way. Well, we've covered a huge amount of ground there for people starting out in thumb position. So make sure you review this lesson, make sure that you're really comfortable moving in and out for regular uh, playing positions into thumb position. And you may wish to check out the previous lesson in this, this series. Now, going forward, I'm going to be covering the semi-chromatic and the diatonic hand shapes um, in detail. But we've also got a lot of other lessons to come out, so it may take a little while for me to get there. But rest assured, I'll be revisiting thumb position in detail and providing links to those lessons directly below this video if you're watching on discoveredoublebass.com. And if you're not, make sure you get over there, sign up to the email newsletter, and I'll send you all of the best material that I've got. Uh, including some exclusive videos for subscribers only. So thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the lesson, please click that like button and it'll encourage me to get on and do more videos on thumb position. Keep practicing and I'll see you next time.